Right, hello. Uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different for, for this lesson. Um, rather than do something in a reel, I am going to make a looping flipbook in After Effects. So, I have uh, this series of images, if I can find one. Lots of series of images, but I'm just going to pick this one. Uh, so it's 200 frames of fire simulation. Let's not do that. It's a position. Here we are. Um, and that plays through. So it's a fire simulation from Maya. Um, that's not the topic of today's lesson. Maybe we'll do that another time. But we're just going to take the, the 200 frames that we have and we're going to make them into a looping flipbook. Um, so how do we do that? Well, if we've got our 200 frames, what we're looking for is some point of continuity. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate my, um, my frames on the timeline. So and I have two sets of um, of identical uh, data, and I'm just going to pick a frame where not much happens. It's quite a kind of neutral frame where I'm going to do my blending. Let's say this one. This one works quite nicely. Um, and this grey bar, it's highlighting, this is the playback range. So what I can do is if I move my mouse to the end and get the little sideways arrows, if I do the bottom one first actually, if I bring that in, and then just turn off the top one. You can see those frames, they're playing normally, no problem. They just reach a point where they stop. Um, and these frames are all just not being played and getting black because there's nothing visible. Um, so if I then take turn this one top back on, I can do the opposite on the top. So when I click play now, the transition between one set of frames and the next is seamless, isn't it? Because there's no there's no variation, there's no um, there's no difference between these two sets of footage. There's continuity here. Well, that's what I want, isn't it? So now I know that this end point and this start point are the same. So I can just take my playback bar, my playback range, and bring it all the way to the front. And I know this frame here leads on to that frame there. Um, nice. All these black frames, well, there's nothing showing anymore. I don't need these. So I'm just going to bring my playback range in to the last frame, which is this one. Uh, and I'm just going to trim my composition down. So now I know Good play. There's still a pop, and in fact there's two pops, but it does loop a lot better than it used to. Oh, it's starting to loop better than it used to. So where are my two pops? Well, one of them's here, because that's where my footage ends. And one of them's here at the front, where I've got both of these things visible at the same time. So what I can do is I can just keyframe the opacity. So uh, T is the keyboard shortcut for opacity, or you can open these arrows all the way, open, transform, and get everything. Um, but really worrying about opacity, so I just hit T. And I know at frame zero, I want 100% this one to be visible. And then as I travel forwards in time, this point here, I want nothing of that one because it's about to affect, like disappear. I want all of that one. That is as simple as it is. Oh no, what have I missed? Uh, I've set my keys, but I've not actually told it to use keyframe mode. Very common mistake to make in After Effects. Uh, I have to turn on keyframing mode first. Now I've got a keyframing, now I can adjust these opacities. So, uh, frame zero here, this one's off. In forwards, there. This one's off. Zero. This one's 100. Let's type this back. There we go. Now, there's a bit of a crossfade. Well, that's fine. We can adjust that. But we can see, hopefully, we've made this a completely looping um, flipbook or se looping sequence, um, which is really nice. Really nice. Not too difficult to do. As long as the fire is quite simple or quite kind of like consistent in what it's doing um, so work quite well so if I select my two tracks just turn on graphing mode you can see here we have our graph now it might be that we want to select these keys just do some kind of ease in and ease out that'll help if like give it a little bit more animation to it and I know the fading in I might want this fade in to happen a bit quicker you can see here we're getting a bit of a half and half. Well, 
this point here to fade in, bring this in a bit faster. That will work. It won't be too fast because then it kind of like is basically like a pop again. But yeah, that works quite well. It's a little bit of a fade out, but by the time there's a lot of sprites on screen and things, um, you won't notice that too much. So, so there we are. So that's made the the looping part happen. And now what I'm going to do is set the 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 flipbook part. So if I select these two. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pre-compose them together. I know that those two work together. They want to stay together all the time. Looping fire. Now I've got a composition that contains that those two frames or those two sequences as, as into a sort of a looping fire. Um, and I can double click this and drop down into it. And I can go in and edit this if I need to, but for now we're just going to take that thing. Um, and I want to do 64 frames. So if I right click here, I can time stretch, select this option. And I don't know what my stretch factor is going to be, but I do know how many frames I want. In this case, 64. Um, and apparently my stretch factor is 81 and a bit. That's fine. This is now exactly 64 frames. And we're going to make a flip book. So the current composition is 256 by 256. And I want to do 64 frames. That's 8 by 8. So that's a 2K 2048 by 2048. Now I've got a big enough canvas to arrange my, my frames on. Um, and I'm going to turn on the grid. And I'm going to turn on snap to grid. And then in my grid settings, just to make sure my grid settings work for me. So um, the maximum grid setting you can do oh, again, maximum grid size setting you can do in After Effects is a thousand pixels for some reason. If I try to set anything bigger than that, it locks to a thousand. Not very helpful because a thousand doesn't multiply by ten twenty four very well. Luckily for us, we can do five twelves and grid lines every two, or we could do. 256s and 1, something like that, that would be fine. And now this grid is set up correctly for us. So, um, this is this, the bit that everyone gets confused by. Uh, I want to duplicate these frames around and also move them in time. So, here's how we do this. So, with it selected, do a duplicate, move it across so it's in the next position, and then move it down so it's the bottom of my stack, move it across in time here as well. Select all of them, duplicate them, move them across, move them down, back. We're creating this kind of cascading effect. Select all of them, duplicate, down, back. Um, oh, there's a few keyboard shortcuts that makes this a bit quicker. So if you hold Control, Control All, it's Control A. Control D is duplicate, and then Control Open Square Bracket moves them all to the bottom of the stack. So you can just go Control A D Bracket, and that'll do the first part of that for you. And then you still have to move them manually. But if you'll notice, even though there's 64 of these frames to arrange, because we're duplicating them each time, it really doesn't take many sort of repeats of that duplication till we filled a whole flipbook. There it is, our looping fire flipbook. Um, last thing we need to do, just save a frame. We don't want to render out a whole vid footage of this. Um, and then we can just save a file. Save it by clicking the render button. And what's really nice about this, um, well, firstly, uh, one way to check if you've done your animations correctly, is as you scrub forwards, they should all disappear one by one. They're all just going out of that animation. So. If you're not getting this sort of disappearing one by one result, um, you've done something wrong. It's very easy to get the timing mixed up. I've done this quite a few times, so I'm quite practiced at it, but it's easy to, to run into um, mistakes and things. But um, what's really nice about this is once it's done once, as long as I know um, I now render another simulation out of, out of Maya or whatever, if I go in here and I replace this fire footage with a different fire footage, One. All that work we did, making it loop, setting it out as a flipbook, is all completely still there. Um, so it's completely non-destructive in that regard. Uh, and so it's very quick for making edits and changing things and, and getting this sort of um, 
iterative workflow going. Um, hope that's helpful. Um, maybe one day we'll do a, a fire simulation lesson, but for now it's just about how to sort of make things loop in After Effects. Um, and yeah, and as always, any questions or comments, feel free to email me, uh, and hopefully I'll see you all next time.